Hi, I'm Martin Brown, a developer relations engineer on the Android team. I'm joined by James Ward, a product manager for Kotlin at Google. Today, we'll cover what's new in the world of Kotlin for Android and give you a sneak peek into how we use Kotlin at Google. We'll take a look at the Kotlin 2.0 compiler, using Kotlin for Gradle build scripts, Kotlin symbol processing, and Kotlin multi-platform. But before we get into those updates, let's just quickly recap where we are with Kotlin. Kotlin has been an officially supported language on Android since 2017. Last summer, we celebrated five years of Kotlin on Android with a series of interviews, talking to several people who made Kotlin for Android happen. If you haven't read them yet, these interviews are a great way to learn more about this story. On top of supporting Kotlin, Android development has now been Kotlin first for four years. This means that our libraries, documentation, and content are all designed primarily for Kotlin. We love Kotlin for its conciseness, type safety, and expressive language features. And our data shows that professional Android developers also prefer using Kotlin. Today, over 95% of the top 1,000 apps on the Play Store use Kotlin. This includes indirect use through dependencies. Looking only at applications' own code, over 70% of the top 1,000 apps have Kotlin in their code base. Core themes, our recommended solution for asynchronous programming on Android, are used in the code base of 55% of apps that use Kotlin. We can't talk about Kotlin without mentioning Jetpack Compose, our modern toolkit for building UI across all form factors of Android and our greatest commitment to Kotlin so far. Compose has been built with Kotlin from the ground up, and it makes great use of many of its language features, such as coroutines, lambdas, and extensions. It also wouldn't be possible without Kotlin's rich compiler API, which allows us to generate all the logic related to Compose's state management for you. If you're looking to get started with Compose, we have a Jetpack Compose for Android developers course, and our full Android Basics with Compose course is also available now, for those looking to learn Kotlin, Android, and Compose from scratch. I'll now hand it off to James to talk about how we use Kotlin at Google and to get into some of our updates. At Google, we use Kotlin extensively ourselves. It's been generally available for Android projects in Google since 2019 and for server-side use since 2022, joining only four other fully supported server languages. Thousands of Google engineers write Kotlin, and we have more than 15 million lines of Kotlin code in our source control system, which so far has been doubling year over year. Most of our apps are written in Kotlin. We have over 70 Android apps using the language. We also participate in the Kotlin Foundation, funded together by JetBrains and Google, which ensures that the language evolves nicely. For example, by reviewing new features, and any potential breaking changes. We're happy to welcome three new Silver members to the foundation this year, Gradle, Shopify, and TouchLab. Now let's get into what's new. JetBrains and Google have been rebuilding the Kotlin compiler to enable better build and IDE performance. This new compiler, codenamed K2, will be the default compiler in Kotlin 2.0. Compilation speed with Kotlin 2.0 is up to twice as fast as the current Kotlin compiler, and the new compiler will also enable more Kotlin language feature advancements in the future. So we are very excited about the new Kotlin compiler and hope that it will enable even higher developer productivity in Kotlin. The goal is to make the compiler a drop-in replacement for most code, so you shouldn't have to change your Kotlin source. Compiler plugins, on the other hand, will need to add support. We are working to enable experimental use of Compose and KSP with the new compiler around the Kotlin 1.9 timeframe. Internally in Android Studio, we use the Kotlin compiler for code intelligence, refactoring, and other features. These will also need to be rebuilt on the new compiler. That work has begun, and should be in a stable release in the next year or so. To make the migration seamless, we'd love you all to start trying the Kotlin 2.0 compiler as soon as possible to verify that it works correctly on your code base. 
In the latest Kotlin releases, you can try out the new compiler just by setting the language version to 2.0. Once your required compiler plugins have added support, please try it out either manually or with parallel continuous integration builds and file bugs if you encounter any issues. Next up, some news about Kotlin and Gradle. I'm a huge fan of Kotlin for my app and UI code, but I love that I can also use Kotlin to define my Gradle builds. The familiar declarative syntax and power helps me define my builds in a way that is maintainable and extensible. Until now, our templates use the Groovy DSL for new projects and modules, but we are now switching the default to use the Kotlin DSL, starting in Android Studio Giraffe. Using Kotlin for build scripts brings several improvements. Let me show you some examples. The new project wizard now includes both Kotlin and Groovy for build scripts, with Kotlin as the default. The Kotlin build scripts use statically typed values, so code hinting is more precise and more helpful. Syntax errors are more accurate, and they're displayed while editing Kotlin build scripts instead of when trying to sync the project. You also get type and method documentation, and if you need more details, you can control click through into the underlying source code. In addition to Kotlin build scripts, we're also adding Gradle version catalogs as an experimental option, which gives you a centralized, scalable way of defining your project's dependencies. These are just some of the examples of how Kotlin build definitions improve developer productivity. To get started with the Kotlin DSL or version catalogs, download the Android Studio Giraffe preview and use the published migration guides. For a great example of using Kotlin build scripts and version catalogs in action, check out the Now in Android sample application. Now back to Martin to talk about code generation in Kotlin. Code generation for Kotlin began with CAPT, the Kotlin annotation processing tool, which enables the use of annotation processors written for the Java programming language with Kotlin code. CAPT works by generating Java stops from your Kotlin files that the processors can then work with. This stop generation is a time-consuming operation and has a significant impact on the build speed of projects that use annotation processing. This is why we built Kotlin Symbol Processing, or KSP, which is a Kotlin-first alternative to CAPT. KSP analyzes Kotlin code directly, which has several benefits. It's up to twice as fast in clean builds, as there's no stop generation required. It has a better understanding of Kotlin's language constructs and type system, such as nullability. And it supports multi-platform projects, as it doesn't depend on Java. For these reasons, we recommend migrating your dependencies from CAPT to KSP wherever possible. We have a full migration guide on developer.android.com that covers all the details, but here are some of the basics. To get started, Add the KSP plugin to your project in your root level build file. Make sure that the version you use matches your project's Kotlin version. Then apply the KSP plugin in your module and change your dependencies declared with CAPT to use KSP instead. You can do this one by one as you can run both CAPT and KSP together in your project. You might not be able to migrate all your usages of CAPT yet as it's up to individual libraries to add support for KSP. However, many popular libraries already support it, such as Room, Glide, and Moshi. You can also find a list of supported libraries in the KSP documentation. We know that many of you are waiting for Dagger and Hill to support KSP. This work is in progress, and you should monitor the Dagger releases page for the latest updates if you use these libraries. Even if you can't migrate all annotation processors you use yet, we recommend starting the adoption of KSP today, as every usage of CAPT migrated to KSP is a step in the right direction. The migration can be performed incrementally, library by library and module by module. Keep in mind that you'll see the most significant build speed improvement when CAPT is completely removed from a module, as that's when stop generation is no longer required. Again, check out the migration guide for the full details and start using KSP today. For our last topic, 
Let's take a look at multi-platform. Kotlin multi-platform can enable sharing business logic between Android and iOS by writing Kotlin code once and then compiling it for both platforms. This technology is developed by JetBrains and it's currently in beta. We are experimenting with Kotlin multi-platform ourselves. In Google Workspace, we're adopting it to share business logic and to deliver consistent experiences to all clients across Android, iOS, and web. We've been doing this using the Java language for more than a decade, but now we're experimenting with Kotlin multi-platform as a long-term code sharing strategy in these products. As part of our experiments, we're also bringing some Jetpack libraries to multi-platform, which you can make use of if you're already using Kotlin multi-platform to build your mobile apps. Our first three multi-platform Jetpack libraries, which are annotations, collections, and data store, have now moved from experimental previews to alpha releases. We look forward to your feedback on these libraries. For an example of multi-platform data store in action, you can find our Dice Roller sample app on GitHub. To learn more, check out our new documentation page about Kotlin Multiplatform. That's it for our updates. To recap, here's all the things you can try after this session. As soon as the compiler plugins you use support it, check that the Kotlin 2.0 compiler can build your projects. Give the Gradle Kotlin DSL and version catalogs a go using Android Studio Giraffe. Migrate from CAPT to Kotlin Symbol Processing for libraries that support it. And if you use Kotlin Multiplatform, try our Multiplatform Jetpack libraries. Finally, to learn more about what we're doing with Kotlin, you can catch up on our talks from KotlinConf. These cover our work on multi-platform in Jetpack and around Google Workspace, provide more details on our internal usage of Kotlin, give you advice for using coroutines, and more. Thanks for joining us, and have a nice Kotlin.